Worship and put those hands together and praise him. Come on, bless him. He's worthy. He's worthy of glory. He's worthy of honor. He's worthy of honor. He's worthy of glory. Look into a good evening. Good evening. Good evening. We say good evening to our Old Grove Church family. We say good evening to our Facebook family and friends. Uh, we want to say good evening to uh, Lady A, Sister Ada Thurman, uh, 1065 on the river in Mopolis, uh, to all of our listeners and to all of our sponsors as well. Uh, we want to say good evening to each and every one of you. Uh, this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad therein. Uh, we are glad to be here again just for the, to encourage your hearts and mind on the day of the study of God's word. Just want to share a few things with you uh, uh, on today. But we just want to uh, just encourage you a little bit today, you know, through God's word. Um, share something with you. Um, not going to hold you long. Uh, the book of James. Um, chapter 1 and verse number 8 but before we get into the word let us have a word of prayer oh gracious father we come in the name of jesus we just want to say thank you you're so merciful you're so kind father we love you we admire you lord we give you the honor all the glory all the adoration, all praise, because you're worthy of everything, oh God. We, we just, we thank you now for things that as well as it is in our lives. We thank you, oh God, for protection. Thank you for saving our souls. Thank you for looking beyond our faults and seeing our needs. We just bless your holy name, God. We repent now, asking you for forgiveness for all of our transgressions, for all of our iniquities, every sin that we committed against you. We ask you for forgiveness. Help us to live a better life for you before you, Lord God. Thank you for this opportunity again, oh God, for to share your word, to encourage your people. It's in Jesus' name we pray and we say amen. Amen. Once again, we just want to uh, encourage you today through the word. Um, uh, James chapter 1, we want to show, show you something and share something with you. Uh, the book of James chapter number 1, one verse we want to elaborate on uh, on this evening. Verse number 8, um, James chapter 1, verse number 8 reading out of the King James Version. James says, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. We want to we just uh, talk a little bit on that uh, today. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Um, I want to tag that with a subject, the results of double-mindedness. The results of double-mindedness. You know, double-mindedness, when you think about a double mind, when I see double, I see two. Put those hands together and praise him. Jesus said to his disciples yes, in Matthew chapter 6, around that 24th he's worthy verse, of he's worthy of he said, he's worthy of No man he's can serve two he's masters. Wonder, Either you love one or exactly you hate the other. Me. I don't know and, uh, is, so but before we dive into. This verse, we want to 
show you what double-minded means. Double-minded means um, unstable, inconsistent, uh, claim to follow God. I just want to make it plain. But focus on other things. And uh, a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Um, it refers to a lack of commitment or consistency in one's thoughts, one's belief and actions. A double-minded believer may claim to follow God, but struggle to fully surrender their life to him. A double-minded man claims to follow God, but struggles to fully surrender their life totally uh, to him. Let me show you a few results about double-minded and unstable. Unstable means from sudden an extreme change mentally, emotionally, uh, physically, and spiritually. Uh, from sudden to extreme change, unstable. Now, now let's 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 let me show you a few uh, results or a few characteristics of double-mindedness. Uh, first thing, we, we, we're going to hurry up and get out of your way. First thing I'm going to show you uh, concerning double-mindedness is this. Number one, uh, a double-minded person is inconsistent in prayer and worship. A double-minded person is inconsistent in prayer and uh, in worship. Uh, one of the most uh, evident characteristics of a double-minded believer is inconsistency in prayer and in worship. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5 around the 15th, around that 17th verse, Paul say, we ought to pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. We should be consistent in our prayer life in order to focus on the things of God. See, our prayer life, a lot of us, the enemy, the enemy mess with your mind and he it causes you, your mind to go elsewhere. And when we uh, can't stay consistent, you're operating in, in a double mind. Paul said, pray without ceasing. We, especially now, we, we got to be consistent in prayer. And, and our prayers need to be fervent, effectual. When we when we go to God now, we our prayer should be effective and, and, and ought to have some power now. But it, but a double-minded person, his prayers are not effective, not fervent. But God don't want us double-minded. James talked about it that a double-minded person is unstable inconsistent in prayer. 
You're not going to feel like praying. You ain't going to know what to say. Because our minds are focused on other things. Our minds are, are, are elsewhere at times. But I don't know about y'all, but sometimes, you know, it, it, it's not as much now, but there was a time in my life that, 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 that I, I just didn't feel like praying. Heavy heart, heavy heart, heavy mind, mind running everywhere, and and and, and you know, you, you you you, I wasn't consistent in my prayer. Go to bed and then and, and, and wouldn't pray, didn't pray. Wake up, rushing, trying to get there, and not in prayer, inconsistent because my mind was running everywhere, focus on other things, double. So it causes you to be inconsistent in prayer. And not only prayer, but in your worship as well. A lot of us, we can't really worship God like we really need to worship God. See, some people think they're worshiping God. But, 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 but Jesus said to this pagan woman at, the, at Jacob Well one day, he said, God is a spirit in John chapter 4, verse 24. He said, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So if you if you if, if you're double-minded, your worship is not true. You focus on other things and, and your mind is elsewhere. The worship ain't true. Some people come to church, show up on a Sunday morning. But they, 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 but their mind is elsewhere. Their mind is not focused on the word of God. Not focused. So that make that that, that causes our, uh, our our worship not to be true. And that's what that what a double mind do. It causes our prayers and our worship to be number one inconsistent. And the second thing, uh, the results of a double-minded is indecision and decision-making. Indecision and decision-making. Double-minded believers often struggle with indecision and decision-making. Uh, some people are torn between, please hear me. Following God's will and pursuing their own will. Following God's will and pursuing their own desires. There was a time that I I, I, I thought I had it all worked out. I thought I could fix every situation in life. But it's a struggle when you have a when you're double-minded. It's a struggle. To follow God's will, to obey God's word, to obey God what His will is. If you're pursuing to uh, to, to 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 please your own desires, that's a struggle because of a double mind. It 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 we we, we think like that because we're we're on both we're trying to trying to operate on both sides. So. This indecision can lead to missed opportunities and lack of directions in life. Some people are way off track in life because of double-mindedness. Some people are living lifestyles that's, that's not lining up to God's will, but they're pursuing their own desires. Bad decisions because the end result is it will not please God if we don't change and ask God to help us in this. We're going to find ourselves way too out, going out too far. So, so, so to overcome indecisions is important to seek God's guidance through. Prayer. We got to go to God and ask God to help us. 
in our indecisions and in our decision making. Solomon said it like this over in Proverbs 3. He said, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him. He shall direct your path. We need to go there. And before we make any decisions in life, we need to seek God for guidance. We need to ask God which direction. We need to ask God, show me the way. But when you're double-minded, when you're double-minded, it's about pleasing self. When we're double-minded, it, we, we, don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't acknowledge God. We, we lean to our own understanding when we're double-minded. We're going to always be off balance, unstable, when we're leaning to our own understanding. So, so the first thing, uh, uh, the results of double mind, of uh, 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 double mind is inconsistent in prayer and worship. Second, is indecision in decision making. And I believe a whole lot of us have made some bad decisions in life. I'm number one. I can tell you, I made some choices in my life, and I know I can't reach back and, 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 and change it now, but I can tell you this, I have grown, I grew up from that, through the word of God, through the help of the Lord, he, he, he matured me now, when that, that scripture is valuable to me now, in all your ways, acknowledge him, that's valued, it means something to me now. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own. That's valuable to me now. I, I, I lean, I lean, I lean on it now. I lean heavy on it because because I, I I realized in my life now that I can't serve God double minded. The, the the end results won't look good in a Christian life. It won't look good in anybody's life. But 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 I thank God now. He matures us. He has given us directions through his word. That's why it's important that we got to study the word. And the word of God uh, will uh, it'll mature you. If we receive what it says and we're in agreement with what he says, it says, it, it, it'll, it'll, it'll grow you up. We don't have to stay where we are. Where we, are. we don't have to do the things that we always done. But the word of God. It'll mature us. It'll put our minds on the things of the Lord. Amen. So the next thing, uh, the results of a double-minded person, he lacks trust in God's plan. He has a lack of trust in God's plan. See, another another uh, result or characteristic of a double mind believe the lack of trust in God's plan. They may struggle to fully surrender their future to God. See, when you're double-minded, you really don't trust God. You're struggling trusting Him. Trusting God. If God said it, I believe it. But when you're double-minded, when you're not rooted in Christ, you waver. And that's a lack of trust. We got to trust God's plan for our life, for the future, for what's ahead. And, and if you do that, it won't be as bad. It won't be a, 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 as hard on you when things take place in life. Well, you can if you can trust him now. now we understand things are going to take place in our life down the road. Things are going to happen in our life in the future. But 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 if if you if you can get stable with God, if you can if you can uh, surrender your whole heart and your mind to Him, it won't be as 
as a struggle down in the future. But if you have a double mind, you really don't know how to trust God. Job, Job was complete in the law. When all of these things take, took place in Job's life, he lost everything. He lost his cattle. He lost his children. He lost, he lost, he lost it all and got sick on top of it. And his wife started talking foolish out of her mouth. But Job stayed consistent. He trusted God in all of it. He trusted, he, he put his trust in the Lord. Because he said in the text, he said, he said, yea, though he slay me, but I still going to trust him. We got to trust God. What God plan is for our life. We got to trust him. It may sound foolish. It may sound uh, uh, crazy at times when, when, when God gives us certain instructions on what to do. But, 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 but you got to trust him. We got to get out of the way. We got we, we to stop, we stop making ourselves the equation. We got to get out of God's way and, 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 and obey what he say. We got to trust the process. We got to trust his plan for our life. And I know some people are struggling with that. But you got to see God spiritually. You can't, you can't understand God's plan for your life without of a carnal eye. Some people are going to call you crazy. Some people are going to say you, you just ain't right. But if you got to trust God's plan. God has a plan for your life. Some things gonna, that will take place in the future. you got to trust it. It may not be taking, taking place right now, but somewhere down the road, you're going to have to trust God totally. May feel like a disappointment, but you got to trust his plan. You got to trust him. But if you have a double mind, you won't be able to understand God's plan for your life. You won't be able to understand why God moving some certain people out of your life. Why God taking you from this place and putting you in this place. Trust him. And if you do that, if you got to ask God to help you. To trust him. The disciples say help us. With our unbelief. When you don't trust God. That means you don't believe God. When you don't trust God. That means you don't have confidence in God. You gotta trust him. You gotta trust him. We as believers. We gotta put our trust in him. Trust in the Lord. David say and do good. In other words, obey what he said. Do what's right. Because he said so. We got to start asking God questions. I got questions. I got some, I got some questions I got to ask God. Well, ask him. His plan ain't going to change because you got questions. His will ain't going to change because of what you say, how you feel. He's still God. Because I heard Hebrews say he the same yesterday. He the same today and forevermore. He ain't going to change because of us. We just got to trust his plan. But you can't trust him if you got a double mind. You can't do it. You're struggling. Because your mind not focused on his plan. I just encourage you. God has a plan. And I encourage you to be in agreement with what his plan is. Somebody's struggling right now. God already, God already have spoken to you. You ain't moved yet. When he told me to get out of the mob, I had to stop wondering about people and how they're going to feel, what they're going to think. I'm done with that. I'm trusting God's plan for my life. And I, and I know he's going to get the glory out of it again. I'm trusting him. My little feeling ain't worried about folk no more. I thank God that, that he teaching me to trust him. Got to trust his plan. 
Trust his plan. God bless you. Next thing, the results of a double mind. It'll cause you to compromise with sin. A double mind, a double minded person will cause you to compromise with sin. And there's a lot of that going on. A lot of it going on. James chapter number 4 verse 17 says, To him that know what's right and do it not, to him it is sin. A lot of people know what's right. A lot of people know to do good. But they choose not to do good. A lot of people know to do right. They've been taught to do right. But they choose not to do right. And the Bible said that it's, it, 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 it's a sin. You know what's right. You know without a shadow of a doubt. It's been taught to you that it's right. But you choose not to do what's right. It causes God to be angry with you. And that's what a double-minded person does. They are compromised with wrongdoing. They in your family. You know they ain't living right. You know they're not doing right. Even though they choose to live that lifestyle, but 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 God is angry with you because you in agreement with it. You compromise with it. You can see, you can see, you can see other folks, but you can't see your family. You can see other folks sin, but some stuff in your house you can't see. You are compromised because you don't want to lose the relationship because it's your child, because it's your brother or sister. But I come to tell you, you better stop compromising with wrongdoing. If it's wrong, it's wrong. I don't care if it's mama, daddy, brother, sister, first cousin, auntie. God get angry with us when we know it's wrong. And we're in agreement with it. We're allowed to come in our house. We're allowed to sleep in our bedrooms. We allow this stuff. You allow, you allow it. And you know it's against God's will. You're compromising. Can't stand to hear church folk talking about, well, I ain't got no problem with it. Well, you ought to have a problem with it. The Bible told us as believers, we ought to love what God love and hate what he hate. You don't hate the person. You love the person. But you hate that sin that they committing. But we, we're living in a time now we're compromising with wrongdoing. Oh, have mercy. Paul said in, 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 in 1 Timothy 5 and 22, Paul said, he said, lay hands suddenly on no man. And this well, this what else he said. He said, neither be partakers of another man's sin. Be partakers of, do not be partakers of another man's sin. Let me tell you what I did. I used to do. And I'm free now. I praise God. Through the Holy Spirit, through the Lord Jesus Christ, who saved me by his grace. I used to allow people to park behind my house and go meet up with they whoever. I was wrong. I would allow them to, to come and, 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 and park and hide their vehicle in my yard. Why they go home and handle their business. I was just, and God showed me, I was just as wrong as they were. He's going to charge me just like he charged them. But I didn't see, see, with my double-mindedness, I couldn't see it. But through the Holy Spirit now, through a spiritual Spiritual mindset, spiritual eyes now, spiritual ears now. Now I got it. 
You can't come to my house talking about or uh, uh, tell tell you 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 my wife call and my girl call tell her I'm no not no more. I done learned better now. I had to ask God to forgive me, and I went to the people too. Cause I was wrong. Cause I ain't had no business with uh, allowing you to do that. Well, man, we home what? I said no. It, you don't understand. I was wrong. I say I'm sorry for even allowing you to do it. They don't deal with me no more. It is okay. Because my double-mindedness, the double mind that I had, I compromised with the wrong doing. God have mercy. And the next thing, next thing, next thing. And, and, and I'm going to leave y'all alone with this one. I'm going to leave y'all alone. Finally, I'm going to go. Uh, uh, um, the results of a double mind is this. You will have difficulties in maintaining relationships. Yeah. You will you will have difficulties in maintaining relationships. A double mind, a double minded person will always struggle in relationships. Always. Always. You can't serve too. Always. Listen at this good. Double-minded believers may struggle to maintain a good person in their life. You want to all, I don't care how beautiful they are. I don't care how, how handsome the, the guy is. I don't care how, whatever. But if you, if you, if you operate in a double mind, you're going to struggle in relationship. And I'm going to tell you why. Because you're not content. You're not content. No, no, matter, no matter what it looked like. And if you ain't got the Holy Spirit that living in you, you'll never be content. Everybody take in the congregation. Come on, say it with me. You won't. And you and you and you will it'll be a, it'll be a struggle to maintain the relationship. Yeah, it will. Let me tell you why. Gonna have trust issues. You're gonna have some trust issues because of the double mindedness. A lot of a lot of some, some guys got good got good women. They got good women. But they struggle trusting. Now you got women, got good men. But because of the double mindedness, they struggle with trust issues. I'm going to tell you why. Because the double-mindedness will, will allow your mind to go back to your old hurt. To go back to that old pain. That old, that old familiar stuff. That caused you problems. That caused you pain. And the, and the double-mindedness always reminds you. Always bring it back to you. Always bring it to you. It always. And it's hard to maintain a relationship. God brings people into your life for a purpose. We can't focus on it. We can't see that person true heart because of that double mindedness. And even with, and even with our relationship with the Lord. That's why it's a struggle to trust him. Because the enemy reminds you of what he did for you too. <laughs> and we, Lord have mercy. But until we get focused, until we get focused on who's really our source, until we ask God to help us overcome our double mindedness, He'll do it. He'll bless you. He'll take that stuff out of your mind. And he'll have you focus. Isaiah said God will give you a perfect peace. If you can keep your mind stayed on him. See we got to, we got to refocus. We got to get our mind back on the Lord. On the things of God. On his will and his way. 
It's hard to maintain relationship. How you gonna trust? How you gonna love somebody you can't trust? How you gonna grow with somebody that you ain't got no confidence in? This is That's the scriptures. So we gotta pray. We gotta ask God to deliver us from double-mindedness. God, it'll destroy you in every area of your life. It will consume you in every area of your life. You gotta, we gotta go to God. Lord, help me. Don't let me think like this. Don't let me, don't let me feel this way about people. Don't let me, don't let me be have an ill feeling in my heart towards certain people. Help me to focus on you in your way. You told me to love my enemy that I love myself. Help me to do it. I know it's gonna take it's gonna take you to help me. So that that's that's that last thing. It's difficult to maintain relationship. I can't come into this great kingdom without Jesus said, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man will let me in, I'll come in and suck with you, fellowship with you, and you with me. He wants that relationship. He wants that with us. He wants our whole heart. When you're in relationship with someone, don't you want their heart? You want their whole heart. You want to love them, and, and you want them to love you. But that's ex exactly what the Lord wants from us. He wants our whole heart. He don't want us part-time. When you call on him, he answer. But when he call on you, do you answer? That ain't good. Because of the double-mindedness. We're spending our time elsewhere. But when you ask God to deliver you, because I asked the Lord, I said, deliver me from myself. That I'll be able to focus on my real source. And that's Jesus the Christ of Nazareth. The one that does everything for me. The one that provides for me, protects me. Does everything. I want my mind stayed on the Lord. I want my mind on him. I want the attitude of him. I want the attitude of Christ. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. I want to think like him. I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to, uh, uh, I want to, uh, 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 I want to, I want to be like him. I want to love like the Lord. Come on, bless him. He's worthy. Ain't nowhere near that yet, but I want to love him. I want to love people. He's worthy of honor. When I know they can't stand me. He's worthy of glory. Mm. But you can't do it. You double mind. You can't do it. I don't hear you long enough. But this is the word. The results of a double mind. Let us pray. Father, we ask you now in the name of Jesus to forgive us for double-mindedness. Thank you, O oh God, for reminding us tonight. Help us to keep our minds stayed on you. Thank you, Lord. We just thank you. Help us to live better, Lord. Help us to do better. Help us to love better. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We love you, old bro. Facebook family and friends, we love you guys. Hey, um, Lady A, thank you again uh, to all of our listeners, our sponsors, and uh, all of our, um, everybody that tune in. I just want to say thank you all and just be encouraged and, and, and let's, let's do better about one another. Let's, let's, let's live better. Because we got to face a, the judge, Jesus Christ. He's coming and he's going to judge this time. First he came to save, but this time he's coming to judge us. And we ought to have our houses in order. 
Amen. God bless you all. Have a blessed day the rest of your day. And continue to love the Lord and love each other. In Jesus' name, y'all be blessed. Could you imagine getting ready to walk into your kingdom and getting your inheritance and saying, hold on. I got to go get some of my friends.